My presentation is titled The Performance of My Gender. Seeing comes before words. The child looks and recognises before it can speak. But there is also another sense in which seeing comes before words. It is seeing which establishes our place in the surrounding world. We explain that world with words, but words can never undo the fact that we are surrounded by it. John Berger, Ways of Seeing. This quote embodies the thought that, that, that we all see and make assumptions about things well before we get the chance to speak to or learn about that thing with words. Sadly, it is human nature, and we are all guilty of assuming before we know the facts. Seeing comes before words, a child looks and recognises before it can speak. They say that hate is a taught behaviour, a child is not born homophobic or racist, but it is in fact affected by their environment and the people or things around them. So what does that mean for gender performativity? We explain that world with words, but words can never undo the fact that we are surrounded by it. It is also human nature to try and explain everything. We fear what we do not know. And the thought of breaking down something such as gender, something that has been a concrete staple for centuries, makes many people shut down. A child goes into a store and chooses a dress to wear for their friend's party. The mother sighs and tells them to put the dress down and say, says that boys don't wear dresses, only girls do. The boy is confused but believes in his mother. He continues his life performing what he's been told is the male gender to please those around him, even though he's always wanted to wear that dress. Ever since I had the ability to choose what I wear or how I look, I have always seemingly stuck to the metaphorical middle of the gender spectrum, never branching into hyper-feminine or hyper-masculine, just being happy being non-binary and neither male nor female. I have often wondered how I would feel exploring the whole gender spectrum. Would I find a new style? Would it change the perspectives of my own gender? Would I realise my current gender, or lack of, has been a performance this whole time? My work explores my own investigations into this, an exploration of my own gender. Trans people ought to be understood as engaged in a practice of self-determination and exercise in autonomy. Judith Butler, Undoing Gender Butler explains here that being trans or going against the gendered norm is not an attack on gender. It is not to rebel or pur purposefully go against these norms, but it's just the human right to exist in a way that they want to. She mentions autonomy, and later in the chapter, trans autonomy. These words show that trans people have as much control and right to do what they please with their bodies as anyone else. The fact that they are trans shouldn't and doesn't matter. This all explains that the understanding of trans people is just the understanding that we are just people who are exercising the right to be who they want to be and freely express themselves in a way that they want to. And it's key to know this to understand who trans people are and what they are fighting for. Claude Cahoon is an artist most known for their trans autonomy their work being a playful attitude of exploring their own gender and their own beauty. Cahoon's work was meant to unsettle the audience's understanding of photography as documentation of reality. Their photographs were Cahoon playing a performative persona. Or was it a persona? Do these photos actually show the real Cahoon in disguise of a persona? We will never know and maybe Cahoon didn't really know themselves. The way they perceive themselves as different genders, different beings, their gender performance and willingness to ex experiment has helped me a lot with this project. The photograph clearly only signifies because of the existence of a store of stereotypical attitudes, which form ready-made elements of signification. Roland Barthes, Image Music Text. Stereotypes are the key to how genders are, and the reason they exist at all. 
Stereotypes have been ingrained into us since the dawn of time, and stereotypes are prevalent in the art world too. As Barth says, photographs become preloaded with stereotypes even before the viewer has seen them. People judge photographs, consciously or subconsciously, and the subject matter in them. It's human nature. But Barth is saying here that the photograph only signifies because of these stereotypical attitudes. Is that true, or is there a way to perceive the photograph without thinking of stereotypes at all? Here is some work by Mitchell Moreno called Body Copy, which depicts the collection of titles from dating adverts, and Moreno responding to these titles by creating personas of those people text add a new level to the work, more depth. When you learn about why these photographs were made and what the writing means, you begin to see more about who these people are. They have a backstory, they have lives beyond these photographs, even though they don't. Moreno goes one step above these stereotypes and adds extra narrative to them. Compelled to cite the norm in order to qualify and remain a viable subject, there is no one who takes on the gender norm. On the contrary, the citation of the gender norm is necessary in order to qualify as one, to become viable as one, where subject formation is dependent on the prior operation of legitimating gender norms. Judith Butler, Bodies That Matter. Butler uses the word viable in this citation. The dictionary definition of viable is capable of working successfully, feasible. Butler is saying here that in order to adhere to being viable and being accepted as one, you must adhere to the gender norms. The gender norms that are present in our society and seemingly set in stone for how each gender should act. The word viable is harsh and aggressive and it shows just how much these gender norms are affecting how we act, how we are. Also, the use of the word sight displays this idea of falsifying your gender to please others. Just like how you were reading a quote out of a book, you are performing someone else's truth. You are mimicking someone else. To cite the norm? How is that possible? What is the norm? Is it what we've been told, or is it what we want to be? or something completely different. Inspired by this, I started my work by creating alter egos, envisioning multiple personas, the businessman, the lad, and the goth are shown here. I decided to make this like a passport photo, as passport photos are interesting, as they prove your identity and that you exist, but they do it in a way that strips you of your identity. No hats, no glasses, your clothing is hardly shown. But like Moreno, I wanted to add an extra narrative to it, so I did a professional photo of the character, and then sort of who they are in real life. The lad going out for a pint, the goth rebelling against the photo altogether. I want to take these stereotypes and add a story to them, create a bigger narrative than once thought, make the photos playful. This experience to me was strange and bizarre, as I was playing these characters and people who I wasn't, and never thought I'd be, and wearing things like makeup that I hate wearing. Weirdly, however, it didn't feel upsetting to me, because I wasn't me, I was playing someone else, another character. It was also eye-opening, because by becoming these alter egos, I found that some of the styles I wore, especially the lad character, I found that I liked, and I've continued to wear the clothes from them. My own gender spectrum is slowly expanding, and I am understanding more of it with each of these photographical explorations, which is so exciting. As Berger said, We explain the world with words, but words can never undo the fact that we are surrounded by it. All these different people exist in our world, all of different identities, and it's about time we start letting them down with words and try to understand them. This work, Buzz Riders by Cindy Sherman, and her general exploration into gender identity, also heavily influenced my alter ego work. 
In this piece of work, she documented people waiting for the bus by becoming them, dressing up as them and doing the exact same poses as they were waiting for the bus. This work is so visually stunning. The simple concept of exploring gender through these random everyday people just going about their day. Using people who get the buzz in Western culture is such a uniquely human thing. Everyone has got the buzz at once in their lives, and a bus stop brings in a wide variety of people. Because of this work, I feel that I know these people and their lives better. Sherman has perfectly captured who they are. You forget that it is Sherman performing these people. You believe that they are real people. This has a lot to do with the amount of effort put into costuming, and how she has even gone to, as far as to recreate the exact same positions that they were standing or sitting when she took the photographs. I am inspired by the amount of effort she has put in to make these as accurate as possible, to make her gender performance the best that it can. This links back to Butler's use of the word viable and citing the norm. Here Sherman is performing a range of genders, but does that make her less of a woman or not deserving of the gender she identifies with because she performed another gender? There is neither an essence that gender expresses or internalises, or an objective ideal to which gender aspires. And because gender is not a fact, the various acts of gender create the idea of gender, and without those acts, there would be no gender at all. Judith Butler, Gender Trouble. The theory of gender performativity was first outlined by Judith Butler, a theory that everyone's gender is performed. It is an act, whether you realise it or not. Butler is explaining how the perceived notion of gender only exists because of what makes it up. The fashion, the personality traits, the familial roles. Without them, what would gender even be? By saying objective ideal, Butler is saying that, like anything, gender is subject to opinions on what is right and what is wrong. One person's feminine could be another person's masculine. So if we all perform in our gender... Are we doing it to please ourselves or everyone else? Butler goes on to say that gender is not a fact. Okay, so why do we think that it is? Gender is performed, noting its dynamism within a person's social relationships and ability to be influenced by changing cultural norms. Unlike socialisation theories, which post it that a gen person's gender is largely influenced by the gender behaviour to which they are exposed as a child, requiring generational places for change. Dutch suggests that gender is in fact a reflection of normative gender behaviour within the current social situation at the current time, allowing for much faster structural change. Darby Geringer, analysing the selfie, exploring gender identity through nude photography. This citation brings in a different perspective and opposes to the thoughts of Berger and says that things like gender are more influenced not by their childhood but by the things going on in the contemporary social atmosphere. This is an interesting thought and does make sense. If people see others in their social space experimenting with their gender, they are more likely to do it themselves. The citation also says, allowing for more faster structural change. It's like a domino effect. One person is brave enough to go against the gendered norms. More people will be brave too. Moving on to an artist that has inspired me to express my own gender in my work. Trish Morris's work, Seven Years, highlights her recreating family photos. She describes Seven Years as the awkward pictures, fingers in front of the lens, eyes shut, unattractive body language. Pictures that would have normally ended up down the back of the sofa, or burned so that we'd, they would never see the light of day. This description really stuck with me. Every childhood photo is sacred to me. I love going home and looking through the family albums. And I don't care that all of them are taken with a bad disposable camera, with unnecessary flash. That's what makes them beautiful. That's what gives them charm. And that's what I like about Morris's work. And that's why I want to employ my photography. Morrissey displays everything that I want to portray in my work. How she performs these old family photos, 
how she becomes the past versions of herself and her family. I want to take inspiration with how she isn't focused on replacing the old original photos, but bringing new life into them. Although she is probably doing this in a way of preserving these memories and a way of documentary, and not necessarily gender related like I am doing, she still embodies the thoughts from Bergen Barth's about seeing before words, and assumptions and stereotypes we have about things. We make assumptions about Morris's family when we see these photos. They look like a typical working class family, and I feel like Morrissey embraces these assumptions and by keeping the bad photography practices in the photos. And my next and final piece of work was directly influenced by this. In order to figure out my gender, I must explore it first. This is what I said in my critique of my work, and this pretty much sums up the whole project. My work depicts me recreating my old family photos, and sees me becoming my parents and my younger self. By becoming people I know really well, it allows me to confront and reflect on all the change that has happened in my life. I am not the girl I once was. I am realising my own gender by performing different genders and familial gender roles. This relates to my work in the AV artefact, because I feel that it brings together all the research I have done. It brings together the thoughts of my artists Claude Cahoon, Mitchell Moreno, Cindy Sherman and Trish Morrissey by showing that I am not ashamed of exploring my gender. I have been inspired by all that I have seen and are ready to figure out my own gender and I want to recreate these photos as accurately as possible to preserve those memories because they mean a lot to me. And it brings together all the academic research too, Berger and Barth's thoughts on stereotypes and assumptions and how my family is quite traditional in their familiar roles. But like Morrissey, I'm not afraid to show that. And the thoughts from Butler and Geringer about gender roles in society and exactly where they come from. And I feel that like recreating that family photos is the exact way to pay homage to that and the idea of gender performativity.